Update. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to do Thanksgiving dinner at my parents without my wife? Original post. I, 30 male, feel stupid for even asking. My sister, 29, and my wife, 34 female, did not have the best history. Before we met, my wife was my sister's landlady, and she was renting the room at the back of my wife's house six years ago. She got evicted less than four months after moving in because my sister did not pay her rent at all. Then she was taken to court for damages that costed way more than she put down on a security deposit. My sister did end up having to pay but basically hated my wife for this. We met after this all went down, and I went to go pick up my sister's stuff she left behind that my wife was decent enough to not have thrown out yet. We started chatting and really hit it off. Started dating, a year and a half later she got pregnant with our son. Now we are happily married, but my sister never took it well. We weren't as close before all this, but after becoming a traitor in her eyes, we didn't talk much. She hasn't even met my son, who's three. My parents are really trying to push for us all to have a family Thanksgiving at their place. My sister never wanted to go because I'd be there with my wife and she didn't want to see me. My parents never pushed it before because they didn't think my sister was being fair, considering the issues she has with my wife for all things she did herself. This year, they feel different though, since my sister broke up with her boyfriend of six years, and it's her first holiday without him. She, however, doesn't want to see my son or wife, so that's why they're asking if they'd be left at home. My wife doesn't have any other family, and I don't want her and my son missing out because my sister doesn't want them there. It's not a problem for me to miss out on dinner with my wife so my sister could have the company, so I'm just staying home with my own family. My sister is blowing it out of proportion because she wants me there. But I'm being an a-hole because she wants the whole family there. Parents are taking her side here because it's been a difficult year losing her boyfriend and job. So she just wants one family dinner for Thanksgiving. I get it, it's been tough for her. But I'm just having a hard time seeing how it's selfish or being inconsiderate to not want to exclude my family. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not today, home. It's been six years and your sister was at fault. Time to grow up and drop the grudge. And the fact that she would hold it against your toddler is ridiculous. If she wants her whole family there, she needs to accept that your wife and child are family, whether she likes it or not. Family doesn't always get along. She needs to deal with that or not expect you there. It's how I feel too. My wife was the wronged party and she's over it now. I'm sure because my sister was the one who had to pay out of pocket, she feels differently about it. But still, like you said, it's been six years. Your parents have clearly babied your sister her whole life if they've allowed this to go on this long. This should have been nipped in the bud years ago. But for some reason, none of you put your foot down with her tantrums. Your responsibility is to your wife and child. End of story. If your parents are going to act this irrationally and bend your sister's hysterics, it may be time to draw a line in the sand. This is one of those times when taking no side is actually taking a side when one party is so clearly in the wrong. For the past few years, they have told her that if she doesn't want to be around my family, then she can be excluded from family events. This is the only time they want to do whatever to make her happy because of what's been going on. Your sister and parents can't have it both ways. If parents are wanting to prioritize sister this year, then they need to commit to that. That means accepting Thanksgiving for them this year is just parents and sister. But they cannot demand you pretend you don't have your own immediate family now. Your wife and son. They are literally demanding you disrespect your wife and child by pretending they don't exist, and that your parents and sister are still your only immediate family. That's unfair and unhealthy, and hardly going to help your sister get over her breakup. Call your parents on speaker. Ask your mom how she would feel if a couple years into her marriage, your dad had left her to celebrate Thanksgiving with a three-year-old toddler alone while he celebrated with his real family. Ask your dad if he would treat his wife like that. If this is the kind of husband he was raising you to be, and then hang up so they can think about it. Not today, Hall, although your sister is. She's mad at your wife because she didn't pay her rent and got evicted six years ago. I guess she's had a rough year, but let it go already. If the whole family isn't there, it's your sister, not you. Good luck. Not only didn't she pay rent for four months, she also apparently managed to damage the property so much the security deposit didn't cover it. That means that it wasn't a few smaller things, but some mid-sized to major damage. Within four months. Not today, Hall and sister should get over herself. She was in the wrong 100% back then. And now for the update. Well, of course, I didn't follow along with her ridiculous request. 
wasn't about to leave my wife and child at home to have dinner with people who didn't want my family there. It pissed me off like you can't imagine. We had fights prior to the dinner because I couldn't believe my parents were fine with excluding my son from time to spend with them. It bothered me the more I thought about it. Then there went my sister calling, crying that I'm a piece of trash for not being there for her. Honestly, it was so irritating. We went back and forth. I just remember telling her to grow up and stop being a spoiled you-know-what. And, well, she didn't call after that one. We stayed home to have our own Thanksgiving. My son kept asking where Grandma and Grandpa are. I wasn't about to tell him the real reason that we weren't going with them, so we only told him they're a little sick so we can't go. He still wanted to talk to them. The video chatted for a while. Then you could hear my sister in the background. Then they were suddenly in a hurry to end a call. I'm sure she didn't know they were talking to us. I tried not to let that anger me too much so we could all be in a good mood. To the person who suggested a nice pajama Thanksgiving dinner? Well, we followed through on that and it was pretty relaxing. My son decided he wanted to go all out with his dinosaur PJs. It was a lovely time. We made a pail of forts after dinner then my son fell into a food coma. So me and my wife had some alone time too. This was so much better than any dinner with my parents and someone who has no respect for my family. It really left me with a completely different view of them. I know she really is going through something difficult. And my parents are trying to help but it hurts knowing that wanted to toss my family to decide to make her happy. For that reason, we won't be spending Christmas with them either. Which has been a whole thing too but oh well, they did this to themselves. We're taking a little family vacation up to the mountains so my son can enjoy the snow. Just to do something fun on Christmas so he doesn't focus on the fact that we're not spending it with his grandparents either. I'm from someone who has no contact with my mother. I tell my kids a kid's friendly version of the truth. That way no one else can come along and spin lies and turn them against me. For me, it's been my mom has problems that it makes her mean and I don't want you guys, my kids, have her to be mean to you. You could explain for Christmas simply that Granny and Pa need to support Auntie right now because she is sad. And Auntie asked to not do celebrations with us this year while she gets better. So we are going to do our own fun things. Sure, it's nicer than what is happening, but at least kids knows. This is a really good explanation. Thank you. It's hard to explain these adult situations to a little kid. And we don't want to necessarily lie to him. But also, he obviously can't know what the real reason is. My mom was estranged from her family. Before I was old enough to understand the details, it was always, Mama's family are mean to people. And we are worried they will be mean to you. We promise to tell you when you're older more. And then when I was older, she told me the real reason. Just like your son will one day need to know the real reason of this spoiling if your sister continues. Even if it's watered down to, my sister is not nice to your mom or you, and my parents supported it. Good for you. I don't understand how in the world your sister expected you to dump your family for her. That is totally ridiculous. It really is, honestly. After all these years to still have that grudge over a situation that was no one's fault but hers. Great post. Sounds like you have a healthy marriage and know where your priorities are. Congrats on your traditions. Do they make dino PJs in adult sizes? Preferable Christmas themed. I may have to try that. Now for the last story. Update. Am I the a-hole for calling out my mother-in-law at her daughter's memorial service for implying her daughter's death was sadder because she wanted children? Original post. My 26 male wife's 26 female younger sister 23 female passed away unexpectedly. It was shocking for all of us. And I've just been trying to be supportive while processing my own grief. At her memorial service, I overheard a relative who had lost her only child. Tell my mother-in-law that while my sister-in-law's death was tragic, at least she had another child. My mother-in-law tried to explain that it wasn't any consolation since her daughters were both unique individuals. But then they got into a borderline argument about it. My mother-in-law then tried to put it to rest by saying, In any case, even if I still have my wife, sister-in-law was my only hope for having grandchildren, since my wife doesn't want any so I'll always be mourning that missed possibility. For context, my wife and I aren't even child-free. We just don't want to have children until at least our late 30s. It has been a very sore point for her mother, who has made it clear to everyone that she believes we are lying about delaying it just to avoid discussing it with her. At that point, I interrupted and said it's a very insensitive thing to say about both her daughters, to reduce one's entire value to her openness towards having children, and dismiss another's value for not having children in the near future. 
My mother-in-law seemed to not even consider my point and was mostly just incensed about how we could even confront her at a time like this. She finally told me she's not in any state to deal with us and left. I later told my wife about it, and she said that even if I was right, that it wasn't the time to bring it up, and that she doesn't have any emotional capacity to even care about it at the moment. I feel really guilty for being responsible for creating some new drama right now. But I also think what my mother-in-law said was highly dismissive and that I had to defend my wife right there. Now for the top comments before reading the update. You're the a-hole. Your wife is right. This wasn't the time or place to have this conversation. Your mother-in-law is dealing with incomprehensible grief and isn't in a position to have perfect feelings about things. And while her comments were ugly and mean-spirited, confronting her at her dad-daughter's memorial service was comically inappropriate. You should apologize. And mother-in-law was poked first by the dumb, well, at least you have another living child, comment. That was stupid and cruel thing to say at someone's child's funeral. So mother-in-law has the additional mitigation of trying to defend herself against that hurtful comment. Exactly. This conversation never should have happened in the first place. Grief is not a competition, and the person who said that is just as big of a nahal as Opie. You're the a-hole. And the relative who started the conversation is a massive a-hole. Who the hell says, well, you lost one, but hey, at least you've got another. What? That's so insane. And then for you to be rude to her about your opinions and having children while she's mourning the death of her child? She is absolutely allowed to mourn the fact that she will never get grandchildren from her younger daughter. Who cares if she made some passing comment about not having grandkids? She's allowed to mourn not getting grandkids just as much as you're allowed to not have children. You should have bit your tongue. You were way out of line and so was the relative. She is absolutely allowed to mourn the fact that she will never get grandchildren from her younger daughter. Exactly. She is allowed to want grandchildren and experience grief over the very real chance she may not get to have them. That is absolutely okay. You're the a-hole. The woman had just lost a daughter, and some dumbass was arguing with her about how it shouldn't hurt. In the context of that argument, your mother-in-law was put into a position to say something in the moment she didn't mean. Then you decided to butt in, gang up on her, and call her out at her daughter's funeral? A-hole move. Incidentally, since you were eavesdropping long enough to relay the rest of the conversation, you could have intervened earlier, like when some Mayhal was telling your mother-in-law she shouldn't be sad about her daughter's death. It seems pretty callous towards your mother to only get worked up when you did. And now for the update. I should probably explain why I didn't respond to any of the comments. It dawned on me immediately just how awful it was to say what it did, and that I continued thinking I could be right in some twisted way till I saw the answers here. I told my wife straight away how sorry I was for adding to her grief when it should be my duty to be by her side through it. I waited till now to apologize to mother-in-law. I told her I failed her in every way, by not standing up for her when she was told a massively insensitive thing, by misunderstanding what she actually meant, and by causing her that kind of hurt when she hadn't even began to process her mourning, and affirmed that she is the best mother both her daughters could have asked for. We cried together for some time. We talked a lot. About my sister-in-law, her life, how difficult and different it's going to be. We had a frank conversation about the future. She said she was sorry how her comment might have come off as, but she really felt upset deep down because she might not get to experience being a grandmother. I didn't really know if it was the right thing to say at a time, but I told her that we both really do want kids, but we want to be richer and in better places in our careers, so we won't have to struggle with balancing parenthood with work and can spend time with them. I even told her we just started saving up for freezing embryos and are hoping to get it done next year. She seemed to be genuinely convinced and comforted and said she's happy we had that talk. I'm really, really grateful for the sub. Without it, I would have probably just sat on my crappy opinions indefinitely until people forgot about it. I wish it didn't need to be told what a nahal I was. It takes a massive amount of self-awareness to not only realize you were wrong, but also to own up to it with no excuses to the people that you hurt. It sounds like your mother-in-law was comforted by hearing that you and your wife had plans in the future for having kids. I know we are strangers, but damn, I'm proud of you, Opie. I agree. It sounds like the whole ordeal may actually end up strengthening Opie's relationship with mother-in-law, which is probably good for both of them given the circumstances. Also, it sounds like mother-in-law having hope for grandkids again might help at least relieve a small amount of the massive grief she is facing. 
So happy you recognized and apologized for your poor behavior. Fingers crossed that all goes well for you and your wife on your future fertility journey. Also very sorry for the loss of your sister-in-law, but thankful that your family is coming together to support one another. OP, this is just really impressive. Thank you for being honest and present for your mother-in-law and your family, and coming back and updating the sub. I am sorry for your family's loss and hope you can all continue to heal and grow together.